What's going on, everybody? Yay, so here, and welcome to episode number 10 of Eat, Speak, Compete, the podcast where we talk about everything going on in the gaming and esports world on a week-to-week -week basis. Again, my name's Yeso, your host. My co-host is always Luke Shimona Hebrew, back here once again for episode number 10. And as we were uh, just talking about before we recorded, we haven't been canceled yet. We made it 10 episodes. So 10 episodes. It's a good day. We're it's doing Monday. pretty good. Uh, we're grinding away, and uh, we made it to double digits. So yes. you know, just another day surviving in esports. Yeah, doing great. Uh, it's been fun, honestly. The first nine episodes were a blast. We got a ton to talk about here uh, today, so super excited about that. And we'll kick things off at the top with a little Dota news. Now, uh, disclaimer here: Luke and I, not Dota players. Never played it. Never played Dota. Never watched uh, it. So, and there's going to be some people that are very much going to judge us for that. That's fine. Do whatever you got to do. But we got to talk about the international because TI10 finished up this weekend, and Team Spirit, uh, representative of the CIS, end up winning uh, with an incredible losers bracket run. And this is the first CIS team to win TI since TI1 in 2011, which was won by Navi. So. Uh, huge for them. They beat tournament favorites PSG 3-2 in grand finals, and they had an incredible lower bracket run. They had to win five series in the lower bracket, had a 10-2 and game record mm. in that lower bracket run. So just a, a huge underdog story for Team Spirit and what a huge prize pool. Uh, I think it was they win. I think they will win uh, $18 million for taking so the prize pool like 30 mil? Something like that, I think, yeah. Solid. Solid. TI comes out big. I mean, they have some That'll of the move. biggest prize pools in esports because of the, the crowdfunding they do is incredible. And yeah, then the just the money stuff, they just yeah. straight put through, yeah. Cool. Good for Spirit. Yeah, honestly. It was funny. I was walking out, and uh, James pulled me aside, and he goes, Putin. Putin congratulated Team Spirit. And I was like, dang, Putin com like commenting on gaming. That's interesting, but it is a, it is a, a Russian team, so... Uh, you know, while we aren't going to go super in depth, we definitely cannot talk uh, at, at length about Dota. Uh, just congratulations to the Team Spirit. Obviously, I know the international is an incredible tournament, uh, so hats off to them and well done. Yeah, it was digital. No, it was. It they were in. Somewhere? Yeah, they were in uh, Romania, I believe, is where it took place. So right. uh, while they didn't end up having fans, uh, they canceled that. They did have. It was a LAN. So cool. Huge, huge win there. So. Congratulations to all the Dota fans as well. I know you guys love uh, TI, and I think uh, the 10th tenth, tenth one certainly did you guys well. Uh, next up, though, let's talk some Apex. Mm. Pro League started up this weekend. We had our first two days of group play and Team Esports Arena, where uh, if you guys didn't see the announcement this week, we officially announced that Team Intel from will season be... Season 3 Series yes, E. from Season 3 Series E, which is... Duplex, Verholst, and Skittlecakes will be representing Esports Arena as Team Esports Arena in outside competitions. So they obviously qualified for split one of the ALGS Pro League. They competed for the first time in that yesterday on Sunday the 17th, and they were incredible. They finished second place overall on the day behind uh, Space Station Gaming, who was awesome. Uh, they were able to win game five. Uh, Verholst finished tied for second in uh, frags of all players on the day. So uh, really, really great showing from the boys. And, you know, I'll say this. I'm not all that surprised. I was tweeting about it yesterday during the competition. Period. This squad is the best up-and-coming squad in, in Apex competitive right now. They have kind of come out of nowhere because this was a squad put together to qualify for Series E. Uh, they dominated that season, and now they are just torching pro teams left and right yeah you know i i feel like one super excited and hyped for the boys because they did yes. they did a great job in their first week i mean even just qualifying for the pro league alone is you know difficult and, yes. and seeing them not only qualify but also be able to you know hang out with the best of the best and beat the majority of them mm -hmm. uh was super fun to see i love these guys you know they have great ad attitudes i love to watch them on socials and whatnot as well but um overall congratulations to those boys that's great um i would say that you know this section of the pro league specifically i think is really cool because it's really about making it to the playoffs right yeah. there's 40 teams running only 20 of them you know 10 the top 10 basically each sector or whatever move on to the playoffs mm -hmm. um so it's really about utilizing this time to practice with some of the best teams in north america to you know 
get that landing spot, put stamp your name on it, right? Become a threat, if you will, and but really put some respect on your name too, right? Like it's such a such a great opportunity for them on that big stage to um, start bringing some real attention to not just Team Esports Arena itself, but also their you know their individual um, you know talent as players, right? To get themselves in that that same conversation that people are always having about you know whether it's Zach Mazer or Hal or Reps or mm -hmm. you know uh, Monsoon, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? All the all the goats of the game. Um, and I'm, I'm super excited for that. So I, I think that they're off to a great start, you know, and, and it's, it's one of those things where um, since it is just about getting top 10, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like it's, it's seeing them at the top in the beginning just only gives me a lot of faith for playoffs. So I'm, I'm hoping that we can just keep that consistency going, keep practicing, keep getting better, keep learning from our, you know, week to week. Because if we have a bad week, you know, it's not the end of the, it's not the, end of the world. It's true. You know what I mean? So I'm, I just hope that they, uh, you know, they just keep their heads down, they keep grinding it out and... You know, if you guys need a coach to tell you where everybody is, you just give me a call. So, Luke alluding to a little something going on what? Uh, that I do want to go a little more in depth <laughs> on because it was me very yeah, it was very controversial uh, in Apex Twitter over the weekend because a lot of people didn't realize until competition was already underway with the first week, uh, and that was the rule around coaches in the pro league and the way things work. If you guys aren't aware is that coaches for teams in the pro league are allowed to just be in comms with their team during competition. In the middle of games, they can be sitting there feeding information, making calls, giving them advice at any point in the game. A lot of people have been complaining about it. Um, I'm certainly uh, against it, and we'll kind of get into that a little bit more here, but just like at first blush when you were saying that, what were your kind of thoughts on the whole thing? Um... This is an interesting one because I feel like it's like there's a lot of layers to it, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's one of those things where if there's not a necessary, because my basically my first instinct was this, right? Like when I when I think about the pro league, I just assume that there's a Discord channel of some kind. Sure, you can use any pick communication platform. I don't care. There's a Discord channel of some kind that all the players are in, and they have locked voice channels where each of the individual teams are in, right? Because you know ALGS does. Um, uh, mic check-ins or whatever, right? or like uh, they bring the comms into the gameplay, right? They do that kind of stuff too. So they have to have access to their comms in some way, yep. right? So that's step one, which I just assume is the case. And then obviously your coach being able to be in there with you makes sense, right? Because of in-between games mm -hmm. or whatever it is, that kind of jazz. So the argument, I believe, for the other side is mostly focused around the fact that if I just had a Ventrilo server running at the same time, I could just have some whoever is in there telling sure. me the same information and there's no possible way that ea the tournament organizer anybody would be able to stop someone from cheating in that way yes so because of the fact that they can't stop it they just put it in the rules that you're it's legal and you're allowed to do it and i mean that is uh, i <laughs> i think put, I, I think yeah. right sure and okay. i mean i set aside i'd probably pull aside a, a a tweet from a friend of the show zach mazer mm. uh on the the whole issue uh and he said similarly the same thing listen before you all freak out or whatever the coaching rules aren't going anywhere or going to change one of the main reasons they exist now is because if you didn't stream you could already do this and no one could prove it also they aren't worried about five minute delay stream sniping so watching main broadcast or our player streams is completely allowed yes this is very scummy though and i think i hear what you're saying about hey in this offline setting it's nearly impossible to prevent these kinds of things if they're against the rules I hear that, but at the same time, I don't think that's really a strong argument against it. Because for me, I don't, I don't think it'd be, it should be allowed ever, right? And obviously, I think the rules would likely change. I would hope they would change going to LAN. Um, but for me, it's just like, why would you have a coach in comms with you? It's like, why, you know, why would you ever have an IGL if your coach can just be in comms with you and just pull you around the map or whatever and do all those kinds of things. So like from that perspective, it doesn't make sense. And then for me, it's just like, I don't know. I, I think it's, it's really silly and it also overly uh, it, at, you know, advantages the teams with the organizational infrastructure to have coaches, right? You look at uh, uh, some of the players that qualified through qualifiers that aren't signed to big orgs, they don't have coaches and now they just get to, they don't get to play with a, essentially a fourth man in their ear. So I'm against it. I, you know, for me, it feels kind of like an oversight from ALGS. I hear what you're saying. 
uh, and that, and you know, would it likely still happen? Like, let's say, theoretically, they change the rules today, and it's now against the rules and you can't do it. Is there probably going to be, like, multiple teams still doing it? Sure. But I think in terms of having competitive integrity of the game, and especially with how pivotal this year is for ALGS and how they're really trying to level up the Apex competitive scene with this entire format that they've built out, I think this is, you know... Not a huge smear on it, but I think it is definitely like a black mark on what they're trying to do. Yeah, I think that I don't. I don't really think almost anybody would argue. It's like the main bullet points of the conversation. Yes, right. No one's going to argue that. You know, everyone thinks coaches are fine for gaming in general. Coaches make sense. Yes. We're all on the same page there. Nobody in the entire history of mankind thinks that a coach should be able to talk to you in the middle of a game. Nobody thinks that. Nobody will ever think that. And it's, if you are, you're just... It's silly. ludicrous. You're just you don't know where you yeah. are and you're blind. If yeah. you, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? There's literally no no actual person in the esports space, mm -hmm. team, organizer, developer, tournament runner, anybody is mm -hmm. going to say to themselves, like, man, I really need to put in the rules that coaches can talk to in the middle of a game, right? Especially a yeah. game that's exclusively about information. Um, so I think that no one's going to argue that, right? And then at the same time, it, it's like... You know, uh, we'll take Halo 5, for example, because we run Halo 5 tournaments pretty often. And even, like, yesterday, right, like, you have these guys who seemingly might be getting, like, DDoSed from, you know, maybe another player, right? Is that against the rules? Technically, yeah, it is against the rules. Does it matter that DDoSing your enemies or your opponents is against the rules? No, it doesn't matter because it doesn't actually do anything regardless, right? So I, I – but it's still in the rules. Yes. You know what I mean? So it's one of those things where it's like, yes, you should obviously put in the rules that you can't do it. Yeah. And there obviously will be people who cheat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I come I come from the Hearthstone scene where uh, it was always digital and it was mm -hmm. always pretty easy to cheat with information coming in from people. And people used to get caught because their glasses reflection off of the, the portrait would see the stream that they were looking at there. You know what I mean? Like, there are ways for sure. Like, people mm -hmm. will get caught. Like, it will always catch up to them. Just because they got a little bit of extra information doesn't mean that some zero to hero team is going to all of sure. a sudden start taking out TSM and stuff like that, right? So I think that I agree. I think it's an oversight. I don't think anybody is um, – I don't think anyone's going to argue with the high-level bullet points of the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think it – I would expect a change of yep. some kind. At least them addressing it, letting them know, like, you're right. It is an oversight. It's in the rules. Or here's the updated coaching rules because mm -hmm. there's going to be coaching in between games regardless. And I think that is a good thing and, and should happen, right? I would love for a team to come off and maybe – they misplayed a late fight and didn't get into top three. Maybe they finished just outside of top three, and the coach was watching that and then can pull them aside after game two and go, okay, this is what happened. You know, you guys had this information, but maybe you misjudged this. Help them adjust, give them some pointers, and then they go into the next game. I think that's fantastic. I've loved, because I've been around the league esports scene for so long, and we've gotten to see on that front how coaching has developed and grown the game and changed it over the years. And I think we can see these same things with Battle Royales and other different titles. So I think that is extremely, extremely important. And I guess in the end, my, my real kind of just walking away the, from the conversation would be just, I'm just disappointed because I feel like this should have been done the right way from the start. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's ridiculous that players feel like they have to cheat to succeed. Yes. And again, loose terms because, like, who cares cheating this, whatever. Sure. It's not technically cheating. Yes. Right? But it's like people shouldn't feel like they have to push the border of the rules. Rules should be very straightforward. Yes. We're competing. And we want it to be on a fair com competitive grounds, the whole competitive integrity component, right? Mm -hmm. And it's obviously the ALGS's committee's job to uphold those standards yep. specifically. Um, and, you know, based on what Zach Mazur was talking about, it, it seems like it's not required to stream your POV. As far as I know, To compete, no. which sounds crazy to me. Like, I mean, I get that it's a, you know, it's a COVID digital atmosphere, but, like, mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry that if being being able to compete in the pro league, one of the requirements is that you have to be able to stream your gameplay. I mean, it's, a yeah. perf it's the pro league. You know, it's like the NBA. It's like, oh, no, I actually can't wear shoes. It's like, what do you mean you can't wear shoes? Like, yeah, I can't wear shoes. I'm just going to play barefoot. It's like, no, you're not. You can't play in the NBA then. Like, yeah. get out of here. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. I, that was an odd example. But regardless, I, I really feel like um, I would just make the player stream, I guess. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, that way you, you have access to it. You can go back in the VODs. I mean, because at the end of the day, you shouldn't even be watching any streams. Yep. Like, your coach could be able to watch your POV, sure. But yep. your coach shouldn't even be able to watch other people's POVs. Your coach shouldn't be able to watch TSM land somewhere and then tell you what they land and what their rotating pattern is. Yep. If you want that kind of information, watch the week prior yep. and look at the information. Like, you shouldn't be able to obtain any kind of information live like that. That's completely ridiculous. Yeah. 
um, your coach nor you. Like, I would make all the players stream their POVs, and if anybody had a, an additional, like, Twitch tab stream open, I would DQ them right out of the tournament. Yep. Get bodied. Like, I'm serious. Like, I'm, I'm just ranting about this because I back in the day, like, I used to play in a lot of online tournaments. Mm -hmm. You were not allowed to have anything open. You couldn't have Spotify open. You couldn't have YouTube open. You couldn't have a browser open. Nothing. Hearthstone, and that's it. Because you're playing the game. Yep. What else do you need? Like, play the game. I agree. All right, that's it. I'll let it go. We'll, we'll, we'll wrap on that <laughs> front, but definitely uh, a very interesting first weekend of the ALGS Pro League for a lot of different reasons. So we'll yeah. be very curious to see do things change if they change. You'll see me in my dojo week this weekend for the boys. Yeah, <laughs> the one of the, you see all like the Matrix memes and all yep. like the, the control room. We got a nice control room. We dude. do. We, I mean, that setup for production would be perfect. Be honest, you, got all better, the up. you guys better change the rules now because Team Esports <laughs> Arena, if we get any better, you guys are screwed. Yeah, <laughs> we already got second place without a coach. It, it, it's on. Uh, let's talk more Smash. Uh, we love Smash here. And Smash Gone Fall Fest happened over the weekend. But let's start with a little Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl because okay. SmashCon hosted the first Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl offline tournament. And Pink ends up taking the win. Uh, interestingly enough, had to make uh, a little bit of a run through losers, losing to Mirror Man in winner's finals, but comes back up uh, and is able to get the Grands win and the reset 3-1. to one in each series and we have our first Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl champion offline. Yeah, I would say I mean Nickelodeon all in general a lot of things happened. Okay, yes. so let me let me keep let me let me hit you with some details. Rattle okay? off. Hit me, hit me. First off, the tournament was super cool. Yep. Uh, Michelangelo was banned. I have a because, point. I have a very specific okay, point okay, about so that. Okay, we'll, we'll touch on that, mm -hmm. right? So that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Um Aang ended up winning the tournament. Yep. Um and I believe the tweet that came out was that they banned the wrong character. <laughs> um, and the, honestly, the chairman was fine. It was whatever. Did um, Void tweet that? <laughs> no, the winner pink tweeted it. Okay. Um, but, you know, the tournament was fine. Okay. That Wasn't is the not, best. That is not a ringing endorsement. The, the tournament was fine. Tournament. I honestly, I'll be honest. I was pretty disinterested towards the end of top eight. I was okay. like, ah, whatever. Again, it, was, it felt pretty. A lot pretty, of people you don't know, too. Yeah, it felt pretty whatever to watch. But there was a crew battle. Mm -hmm. There was a oh yes. There was a ultimate versus melee crew battle in Nickelodeon All Stars. Yes. Funniest thing I watched all day. Okay. Like literally, I watched the whole thing through mm -hmm. with Void, just hanging out with Team Void over there, mm -hmm. right? Team Ultimate, and like Ultimate got absolutely annihilated. Like just like I'm talking the guys who like didn't know how to play the game that well on like yeah. the melee side were were like taking out like two players each. Yeah. Like it was like super bad. But anyway, it ended up getting down to the point where like. Um, like DeBuzz was able to like after that again I'm trying to remember exactly how many I want to say it was 10 on each side so it was a total of 40 stocks for each team right four stocks per mm -hmm. player and by the time it got to the final two for ultimate there was still I think 28 or 29 stocks left so it was eight versus like 29 yeah right and then DeBuzz like goes god mode and takes out like eight or nine yeah. Right, so it's literally Void versus 20 stocks, which is five full stocked players against yes. his only four stocks, right? So first off, he lost. Yes. Okay, we can get we can get him I there. did see the tweet though where it was just like it was the old Avengers clip and yeah. it was just oh, like yeah. it was just like I have an army and it's just like we have a void and then it's him <laughs> on hold just slapping him around. And it's so, it's so funny because like the game starts, right? And like he four stocks the first guy. Like yeah. doesn't lose a stock and everyone's just losing Whoa. their minds, bro. Yeah. Losing their second guy gets like one stock, gets annihilated, right? So he, he does really good. I think he ends up taking 14 mm -hmm. of the 20 he needs. Um, Damn. But not only, so he got, he took 14 of the 20 he needed. So he yeah. lost to, I think Mewtwo King ended up taking him out. He had two stocks left on Cat Dog. But then there was another player who was last. Mm -hmm. So he did a money match against that player after he lost and he four stocked him. Oh. So then he was like, if I just could have docked his last two stocks on Cat Dog, I, he literally would have done it. Yeah. So that was a long winning story, but it's just because I love Void and Void's a hero um, of all things gaming. Yeah. And uh, it was a very heroic moment for him. And he almost triumphed. He, he failed, but he, you know, he got hundreds of subs. People were pouring love into his stream because he really did just and, and crush it. It was so fun to watch. Void is, uh, I've seen a couple of his tweets lately. His, his stream has been exploding mm. the last few weeks. Obviously, you know, part of it is, He's grinding. Uh, I know he was doing those twenty-four hour streams He's and good stuff. At everything. Uh, he is, yeah, he is incredible. Uh, and also, it, it really seems like Nickelodeon All Star Brawl has brought in uh, an incredible amount of love and support to him. Obviously, he's been giving it to the game and the community. He's 
you know, participating in these tournaments. He said a ton of great things about it and is putting a lot of eyeballs on the game. So I think it's incredible. Obviously, we love Avoid here. Uh, big fan of his, and he's he you know he's supported and been around esports arena for so long. Um, but it's awesome to see how well he's been doing, and he seems to be having a great time, and uh, has found you know another game that he really loves. There you go, Michelangelo. Yeah. Yeah, Michelangelo banned. So let's talk about that a little bit because yeah. they announced that Michelangelo was banned. Uh, and I want to talk about Pancake Mix, who finished third in the bracket. He is a Michelangelo main and had to prep for the tournament and only had one day of practice on Oblina going into the tournament and finishes third. Is Oblina just that busted or... <laughs> It feels like, you know, and this is some of the discussion we were having right before release, because I know uh, James, I think, got early access to the game. We got to play it before it was released. And he was talking about, does it seem like kind of every, most of the characters are kind of busted in their own way? Obviously, Michelangelo, the most, so still has the, the infinite and stuff, and is the reason why he was banned. But does, is that kind of the feeling you get from Nick All-Stars for the most part? Yeah, all the characters are broken. Okay. But... There's some characters that are too broken. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> most, most of the characters are super strong, have really cool setups, and can do cool combos. And, like, mm -hmm. any, most characters can, like, hard spike other characters and take people out the top. But there's a couple characters who, like, their weight distribution makes no sense at all. So, like, they're just as OP as everybody else, except for they die, like, it takes twice as long for them to die. Mm -hmm. So it's like, doesn't make any sense. And there's also some characters I feel like in the game that um, have some like really weird, like disjointed hitbox stuff mm -hmm. that makes it so like the Michelangelo example, um, if you'll figure out the right way to use it, which they will, yeah. uh, it becomes invincible. Mm -hmm. It gets to the point where it's like, oh yeah, like you only can do anything if I mess up. Yeah. And like the inputs aren't, I mean, I'm saying they're easy, but like in comparison, like when you're talking about like labbing, it's like they could do it yeah. every time. That's how good these guys are. That's what they do. Yeah. So it's like, you will lose. Like, like you will not touch me. I mean, again, the tournament was the, the crew stock or the, the stock battle or crew battle was a perfect example of it. Just watching people get four stocked yeah. because it's like, oh, you don't play Aang or Oblina or Michelangelo? No. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh. uh, Plup did, uh, Reptar. Plup did really good with Reptar. Took a lot of stocks. Because, yeah. again, it's like, yeah, I don't know. There's, just, there's just some stuff in the game that's, like, a little bit too much. But they're, they're doing a really good job. They released some patch notes today, even, mm -hmm. right before the show. Um, you know, they're just doing quality of life stuff, trying to get the game to a good point where people have fun with it. Good. You know, because, again, it's not Smash. So it's never going to feel exactly like Smash, right? Yep. It's, it's meant to be different. Um, but the game's very fast, super fun. They're, you know, they're continuously changing things. You know, they're adding additional ability to DI a little bit more. So, like, you know, the better players will live longer, which yep. I think is pretty important, um, and be able to get out of combos, because that's one of the things, too, with DI, right, is, or SDI in that scenario, um, where you're trying to influence... Uh, your body just a little bit to fall out of the combo that you're sure. getting hit with, you know, which can be really big for Oblina, who, you know, will, can legitimately down air you like six times in a row and then just come back to the stage. And you're just like, so. <laughs> when do I get to have fun? <laughs> yeah. You know, so, so, you know, but again, I think the game developers did a really good job of, you know, keeping it up, you know, tons of different tournaments have going on, content creators are having a good time with it, they're consistently updating all the stuff that's breaking the game that players are finding, yeah. so. And I mean, just to kind of wrap things up for the Nick Allstars Brawls part, I think that's the most impressive part to me is that they've been incredibly receptive mm. and responsive. It seems like they've jumped on these issues very quickly. They want to make adjustments to the game to make players happy and make people feel good about playing it uh, as quickly as they can. Because mm -hmm. I think they recognize probably part of what we talked about uh, in our first couple of discussions about Nick Allstars Brawl is that they very much need to support this and and, you know, make the community happy because they will blow it up. The community seems to love the game initially and it's going to pop off, but you have to support it in the right way for it to continue to grow. So it seems like they're doing that. Let's talk uh, Smash though at SmashCon and Light, hmm. Moist Light wins his first major taking the Smash Ultimate singles, uh, beat Spargo 3-0 and then 3-2 in grands out of coming, uh, after coming out of losers in Similar to what we talked about with TI, uh, Light had to make a long loser's bracket run, uh, beat Mars, Cola, and Meister down three in two. the loser's bracket. 3-2. Three 3-2. Two. Three two. <laughs> All of them. Incredible. And what a run. 
uh, from from light uh, doing you know getting his first major in style and taking out you know some incredible players along the way yeah lights incredible best Fox easy uh, he's been around the whole time in ultimate mm -hmm. he's in pretty much top 10 the entire time um, definitely more towards the, the bottom end of top mm -hmm. um, top 10 for sure um, at least I want to say I think he maybe broke top five at some point but he's always been super good uh, for sure he goes to a lot of events uh, he competes really well um, and he's super clutch like this man just he just reads and he's so confident in his movements and he's just like so many times I watch some of the best players in the world roll into this guy yeah and he just just put you in the floor yeah just always reading the text and stuff so shout out to light totally a clutch player just unbelievable and going to game five I think four four sets in a row he went to game five my heart would have fell my heart would have just stopped I yeah just, i mean can you talk about the stress of it's that incredible. About... i mean one best of five match in a setting situation like that of that caliber yeah like that man's blood pressure must be through the roof and to be able to not only like execute on a playing character like fox especially you're moving mm -hmm. so fast you have to be so precise with your placements and your movements um and he played so well the whole time so consistent Game five, every time, always clutched it. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like he kept his space. He didn't overcommit. Like, it takes a lot to do that, you know, against the caliber of players that they're playing against. You know, you make one wrong move and you die at 70%, you know, as Fox. So, um, really, really big shout-out to Light. So, it's nice seeing him play. He's a great guy. Yeah, big fan. and I think it's impressive when you talk about all those game fives. Hitting those stressful, emotional highs and then having to calm down and reset again because you're like all right beat mars now i gotta beat cola oh okay i beat cola now i gotta beat meister oh i beat meister okay now i gotta go get a grands reset against spargo right now beat that now i gotta beat him in another best of five like all of these highs and then having to calm down reset get ready for the next match is is extremely impressive and i think it just makes just the story of this first major one major win just that much more incredible for light so also a big fan of spargo spargo's insane yes. uh and he's still super young and he's just gonna keep getting better so um i'm curious i guess to see what he does character wise because he uh is a cloud player from four mm -hmm. smash four um so that's yeah, his comfort pick and what he like likes but i yeah. I don't think Cloud is bad by any means, but you know he went to Pyramithra for a while, and that was that was going pretty well. Um, but he ended up he, again. He just always kind of keeps going back to uh, to Cloud. So kind of not curious, I guess, to see if we might have a sore main. Definitely an interesting discussion there. Uh, we've hinted at it a couple times. Now it's time to talk worlds. Oh, it was gosh. a big part of our discussion uh, a week ago. And we're going to start with the group stage before we jump into uh, the way the bracket should go. So let's start with groups. Uh, obviously, Luke and I both got, in terms of the actual official Lolly Sports Pick'em, all good. of our pickups got, uh, both of our pickups got bodied. Big time. A total mess. Uh, and we're just going to go group by group A through D here before we jump into the bracket. Let's start with group A, finishing up with uh, Damwon in first place. Called it. FPX in second place. Just kidding. C9 in second place. Did not call that Rogue one. in third. I call In that. FPX fourth no, place. I did not call that one. We literally everyone, everyone was talking about how this is the group of death. Damn one and FPX are getting out. It's probably damn one first, but damn one and FPX are getting out. And Rogue and C9 can battle for the honor of third place in group A. And not only did that not happen, but we went just full chaos on Friday. We got the three-way tie for second. We got multiple tiebreakers, and FEX finishes in last. What are your thoughts on Group A and how things ended up? Uh, NA! <laughs> Give me some NA. of that hope here, Shout dude. Out I just... to NA, dude. I mean, at the end of the day, obviously, I didn't vote for the NA teams because I know they're going to lose. But yeah. um, my hopium kicked in for sure. I, I love seeing the North American teams do well mm -hmm. congratulations to cloud nine for making it out of groups it's been a couple of years so that's really nice for them yep i think 2017 2018 2018, 2018. was the last time that they the last time any and any North American team made it out of groups and it was c9 and it's them again so you know shout out to cloud nine for continuing to be on top of the north american um league of legends world it's yeah. been like a good decade now and they're still kicking ass so good for them yeah um and other than that um i almost called this group I got half of it. 
I got first and third. You had, yes, you did get first and third correct. That's all I'll say to that. <laughs> Moving on. Close this. My best, the best yeah. group I did the best in. So. I mean, there was a lot of talk about, obviously, FPX, a huge disappointment. Yeah, they got right? annihilated. They came in. Uh, they were they were 2-1 after week one. Or, and I yeah. say week one. The way it typically works is it is the first week for the first sets of games and then a second week, but it was actually all mashed into uh, an eight-day run. <laughs> yeah. So uh, obviously incredible on these teams, but they came in 2-1 after their first three games, and Doinby, their mid laner, said, we aren't going to lose a single game. Uh, they lost every game on Friday, and it was uh, just incredible to watch them just flame out. And I mean, they've been, they're being compared to, like, 2015 LGD oh, yeah. uh, from China, who absolutely, they were tournament favorites and totally flamed out, didn't make it out of groups. I think it is up there with that as one of the biggest disappointments at Worlds. It was just an incredible uh, collapse from this team. And uh, they've got a lot of soul searching to do because these guys are, they were world champions, ch world champions two years ago. Should have picked Yumi. <laughs> they should have picked Yumi. Yeah, that was definitely an interesting pick in the group stage. But uh yeah, rough day for FPX. Obviously, C9 makes it out. Dam one went six and zero. No surprises there. Heroes. They move on to the uh, the bracket as yeah. uh, favorites. We'll go ahead and sure. cruise through to the finals. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, Showmaker didn't even die until their second game against Rogue. He had no deaths in the first three games of the whole thing. So, uh, I dude, mean, it doesn't matter. No one had disgusting. any chance. I mean, when we get to the bracket, I think the bracket is actually incredibly interesting. We'll have a lot of discussion Pretty lucky there. for us, dude. I'll see C9 going to finals, baby. Yeah, we'll see about <laughs> that. Let's go Group B uh, finished with T1 in first, EDG in second, 100 Thieves third, Detonation Focus Me fourth. Um, I'll start with this one, okay? Because go for it. Bottom two were obvious. We knew that was happening. Okay? Yeah, I was hoping a little bit, but I'm not surprised. I got those right. Yep. Now, T1, okay? I just want you to know, yes. I would have absolutely picked T1 if it wasn't for you, okay? You got in my head. Wait, what do you mean? You picked him before we even talked. You got in my head. No, 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 the day before, because you were talking about Faker. We were talking about Faker the other day. Oh, you got, okay. You got in my head about the new squad being too young. It's Faker and all the kids, yeah. And I was like, oh, you're right. Like, EDG's so good. Like, they, they have, they have like, the, the history. Like, you know, maybe they'll probably do better. Mm-hmm. I, I can't believe I just you gotta, you gotta put the faith in Faker you know what you gotta Luke, put faith in Luke Faker Luke blames me I blame Luke for listening to me uh, so I think I'm fine whatever anyway I almost got just, that just I mean be happy you got more points oh well I got two I right. actually think we got the same amount of points no no you got more points in that group because I picked EDG first so you got five points I got two I picked EDG only got, first yeah mm -hmm. Well, but you second. got you get three points for picking third place, right? Yeah, and, and two for for fourth. Yeah, and I only points. got fourth place right, so I got two points. Hmm, sucks so that. I'm pretty sure like didn't body me, but I'm pretty uh, sure Luke beat me for sure. I think body was an appropriate adjective. You probably have twenty B points, and I think I have fifteen. You got bodied, bodied, cleaned out. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> um, I mean, T1 impressive. I yeah, think. they're insane. Faker's great. And actually, the whole roster. It was it was super cool watching them play. They did they did super good. Yeah, it was so I think just, they were really interesting. To it was watch. like they were here and they just dominated. Yeah, super clear cut, great you know quality picks. The group finished really interesting. Hunter Thieves went into the second week of games uh, one and two, and they had their first game against T1 on that day. And if they lose that game, they're just done. Like none of the rest of their games essentially matter to them. And did you watch that game? So, okay, I talked to, I talked to Cameron, who's my roommate about this that night, and it obviously it was part of the discussion on the broadcast, and it was just like, they picked, I, I think, it's not a perfect draft, but I think they picked a very simple, straightforward, and good draft for them. You know, they had the Mal fight, they had plenty of engage, great team fight, and they never did anything. They played a 30-minute game, Mal fight ulted like, twice and i'm pretty sure one of the ults was to get out of a fight and i was just like bro what are you doing like i get it it's t1 it's faker it's world it's pressure is on you got to win this game but the answer is not to do nothing i was so angry 
especially because I felt like this was such a, you know, look, it was going to be hard. But when you look at the end of the day and they were able to take a game off of EDG, which is why T1 finished it first, I'm like, dude, it was all there. You literally could have gone 3-0 on the day and you would have been 4-2 and two and, and, all, uh, and would have probably, uh, you would have had like a three-way tie for first. You would have gotten yourself tiebreakers. So I was, I was so incredibly frustrated and disappointed because it was just like, it was right there. Yeah, I, I honestly... Like, when I was watching the game overall, like, I really do think that T1 is, like, has a very threatening, like, map presence. Yes. Like, when it comes to, like, they're really, really good at, like, keeping themselves in advantage state all the mm -hmm. time. Um, and I feel like I noticed that a lot throughout the majority of their games and groups where I was just, like, they can see everything. Yeah. They're, like, just always right where they need to be. They had so, such a good, like, support and flow going. I think, I, again, I, I was really impressed with all of the individual players mm -hmm. of T1. Um but I don't necessarily disagree. I do think that, um, actually, I think that that draft specifically did favor 100 Thieves a lot. Yeah. Um, but figures God, so get bodied. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. We call him the GOAT for a reason. The unkillable Demon King. <laughs> that does it for Group B. Let's go Group C. Okay. Which, uh, group C while they didn't me. get first place like you predicted, you, you can, you are, you know, this is your time to gloat because it finished up with RNG first. Homo Life Esports second, Woo! PSG third, Fnatic fourth, and obviously I had PSG getting out of that group. This is another one where I was completely watching right, that PSG so. Homo game during the second week of groups, and I was like, the opportunity's right here, PSG. Literally, if PSG wins that game, and then RNG ended up beating uh, Fnatic in the next game, literally if they do that, they're in quarters. And they didn't. And I was just like, I could literally hear you. Like, I'm watching PSG just slowly get just strangled by Han. I and I could just you. hear you. I and told see you. you. Just like, yeah, Chovy's <laughs> sick. PSG sucks. And I was just like, I'm going to get so much flame for this. Dude, I was telling you, even like the week before we did it, dude, I was uh -huh. telling you that PSG had no chance that they were screwed, that Hanwell was going to come out and annihilate, which they totally did. They had a little bit of a rough start, but they came out on top. And that's what matters. And I think that in the pickums, I should get at least some credit because my first place got second, my second place got first, my third place got fourth, my fourth place got third. And I want some points for it. <laughs> so and you got no points. I in got group no C. points in Group C because I guessed everything technically wrong, but it was all like almost perfect. At least I did good, and I picked RNG first, so I got five oh, points. Dude, take that's those. such horse, bro. How am I crazy for picking RNG first? They're literally the defending MSI champions. If Hanwon didn't was literally weren't asleep day one, we would have been fine. I mean, you're probably right. And we'll, and I they will show up in uh, in best of five, and that's what matters. Yeah, we'll see about that. What uh, do you mean? The one bro? the one thing I do want to talk about is uh, specifically Fnatic. Oh, yeah. Obviously, we, we they had they a, were screwed. Though. They had they had a rough tournament. Yeah, they went one and five. But I do want to say because we discussed it a bit on here because. Obviously, the big discussion around Fnatic going into groups was that they weren't going to have upset. Their all-star AD carry, who has been really the focal point of the team this year, not they, they weren't going to have them. And that not only that, but their substitute was Bean, who is a player who has never played a single Tier 1 competitive League of Legends game. He had competed in the European Regional Leagues, which is obviously a, a tough league to play in, but he had never played... LEC, any of the major regions. He had never played any international games, nothing like that. So literally, he debuted in the world's group stage. And while I don't think he was incredible, I think he had an incredibly tough task. And I think he stepped up to the plate big time. And I think for, for that just shows me that I don't think Fnatic was getting out of this group with upset. Yeah. I don't, you know? I don't disagree. So I think that's I think I was pretty. Yeah, I mean, Fnatic was screwed. Yeah. Like if if we're not talking about Group A, like Group C is the new group of death because Group A was a lie. Yeah. So Group C is now <laughs> the group of death and get an island. <laughs> so credit to Bean. Yeah. Uh, totally. and, that's, and, that's super and cool. Good for him. So uh, final group here before we jump into the bracket. Group D finished up with Gen G in first place, Mad Lions in second place, LNG third. And Team Liquid last. And f fun fact for you, uh, TL went 
three and three in group stage for the fourth year in a row and didn't make it out every single time. Uh, I called it. Uh, knew they were there. I got that. I got that group also half right. I just missed first and second. I had them flipped, which is yes. pretty annoying. Um, Mad Lions also was asleep day one, so that was pretty upsetting. But yeah. dude, what? Like, yeah, they're total not a best of one team. Like some games you're watching, you're like, what? What? Are you, hello. And the next game, you're like, you're like, oh my gosh, they're the best team here. Yeah. Like literally, they, they it's seem like very coin flip in best of ones. But if you're sure. the best team or the worst team, to be honest, you're not going to win worlds. Like, you, you, you're going to take some games and you put on some good sets, but, like, after after watching groups, all it made me think was, like, maybe they get to, to semis or grands. Yeah. But, like, I just don't think that – I don't think they have it in them, dude. I don't know. I was pretty – I watched some of those games, and I was like, there's a, there's at least three or four teams here that would never play yeah. a game like that. Yeah. Like, none of the – they could play 100 games. None of them would look as bad as that game yeah. looked. Like, what were so, they doing? in time of recording, right, it is about almost five – uh, in the afternoon Pacific time here on Monday, October 18th. So Group D, literally the funny part, Group D actually only finished about three hours ago yeah. because if you guys missed the show, they went into the day in Group D. I believe it was uh, Gen G and LNG were both two and one. And then Mad Lions and TL were both one and two. Yeah. And there was a 6% chance at the start of the day that we would get a full three-way tie or four-way tie top to bottom with all the teams at three and three and have to play essentially a tiebreaker bracket we got that everybody finished the group three and three so they had to sort they had to seed the teams based on i believe uh length of uh wins and so the shortest team gets the high seed longest team in their wins gets the the lowest seed so it was gen g versus tl tl got bodied out of the tournament that it was Super Mad Lions hard. versus LNG two and three. That, that game, game was incredible. That if was you didn't see it, go watch the Mad Lions LNG tiebreaker it was incredible. And then Mad Lions moved on to play Gen G. That one was not as good, but still an interesting game. And Gen G came out on top, but it was today was insane. And it's funny because I've, you know, Luke, it seems like, has been waking up early to watch the games because I'll wake up to, like, DMs from him at, like, 9 in the morning. He's like, are you watching this? And I'm like, no, dude, I just woke up. Like, I'm going to watch the VODs. I'm, like, rolling and on he's my mad at me too. Screaming. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> but it was uh, incredible to get to all of a sudden tune in at 12.30 here at the office. I'm like, got to watch the last few games. <laughs> and it was insane. Yeah. Super, super good games today. Crazy. I mean, I think first time ever in Worlds ever, right? Four-way tie? Yes. It was like a just total, first time ever. total groundbreaking. Super funny. In, um, but I really would have liked Mad Lion to come out on top of that and get me some pick-up points. So yeah. thanks for nothing. I would have appreciated it as well. I think overall, best group stage. Oh, yeah, for sure. Ever. The rest of it was nonsense. It was insane. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Honestly, Group A was close, though. Group A, no. like if Group A, did, it was interesting yeah, for group sure. A was close. And we got tiebreakers at the end. Nine, like became the heroes of the world. Mm -hmm. Like, but you know, it's fine. Let's talk about the bracket. Let's talk about the bracket. We're gonna bring it up for you. So if you are watching on YouTube, you can see uh, how the bracket shook out. Here's where it goes. Just for note, when they pull them, uh, teams that played in the same group in group stage cannot be on the same side of the bracket. So that's as you can see, uh, RNG and Hanwa separate sides of the bracket genji and mad same way so that's how things shook out we get uh some great matchups here we get lpl versus lpl which is going to be awesome t1 versus hanwa i'm leaning T1 that's my favorite game that's my, that's, that that's, one's gonna be that's, interesting that, this I first think, round i feel like that is what i'm most excited about i think it's gonna be i think damn one mad lions is actually gonna be sick they went to five games in msi that's all i'm saying now is Mad Lions the same team right now that they were at MSI? I think there's a strong argument against that. But as you mentioned, doesn't seem like they're very good in best of ones. Things could change here going into best of fives. I'm liking that one. I think the big thing, though, is if you're a North American fan, Woo, we're you on the other love side. this draw. You avoided T1 and Jam1, uh, which are two Hanwha current favorites. And Mad Lions. And you've got Gen G, who the, the you The four would, best teams are on the bottom. You can literally argue that <laughs> Gen go. G is the worst one seed. Oh, yeah. And you got matched up against them. It's free. literally 2018 all over again. It's just <laughs> a Freak of Freaks 2.0. c has got a 3-1 of them. We're going to semis. And then, God, give me... 
give me RNG C9. Oh, yeah. Because I want perks versus RNG again, just like in 2018. This bracket looks amazing. I mean, will I, Luke and I reserve the right to change things in our pickums later, but like just looking at this bracket, what do you what are you thinking? What are your semifinals? <sighs> My semifinals are probably Are you picking Hanwa over T1? Because you let were just the, hyping. Let me, do, let me do the other side first. Let okay, me do the other okay. Side first. So my, the other side, I'd say it's probably going to be. Honestly, I would have to say EDG versus uh, Cloud Nine. Okay. I think that's what I think that's what I would expect. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go with uh, EDG versus Cloud Nine. And the other side. Oh. See, this is the hard part because you're you've been hyping Hanwha. I'm not, I'm not, you're I'm also not, happy because you're like I'm they made it lions. out of the group. I'm not taking lions. That's fine. So that's I, that's I think easy. that's a safe pick. Um. But it's like, and you were also just like hyping up T1. You were like, they look so good. Dude, dude, like, I that's was so like, impressed with them. Yeah, and now it's, it's just like, it's but brutal. now like, I'm like, it's hard. Dude, I swear, as soon as I saw they were in the bracket against each other, I was like, oh. <laughs> Actually, I, guess I just got excited because I really want to see them play. I think it's going to be a um, match. But I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to have to take T1. Yeah. You know, like after seeing, again, just like only, with my only knowledge being groups, obviously, mm -hmm. in this, I mean, in whatever other information I have. Um just based on how everyone's playing, how the match have gone, what characters are picking, like what's super OP right now, Yumi. Um, I think that, I think that I'm going to have to take T1 versus mm -hmm. uh, versus Hama versus the gods. I am almost exactly the same. I'm taking T1. I'm taking Dan One. He's taking Dan Never one. Give Up. Or, or... I think I'm going to take RNG over EDG, but I will say, I'm not like I know. EDG finished the group stage by uh, losing to 100 Thieves. And that obviously is like, Amazing. that one's going to sting. And it obviously dropped them to a two seed. I'm not reading into that as much as I think other people are. I think EDG is still incredibly strong. And I think you could certainly make some of the same arguments against EDG against RNG. So I think that one's incredibly close. I, I kind of think that's the closest matchup of the quarterfinals. Okay, what if they lost on purpose to 100 Thieves so that they didn't have to play against any of the good teams? Okay, their, their coaches did all the math in the back room, and they said, guys, all we have to do is get laughed at on Twitter for losing to 100 Thieves, and we get the better seed. I'm not really buying that, but whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be honest, I watched the game. I, I highly doubt that was that But was I just case. think, I don't know. When I look but, at, I think that one's incredibly close. I think... Yeah. I think RNG EDG is like a coin flip. I think it goes five games. I think it's going to be sick. I'm leaning RNG, but like if EDG won, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I just think we got the best group stage of all time. And this could be an incredibly fun quarterfinals. NA's got the Hopium big time. They're, they got their eyes on that semifinal slot. And I mean, I wouldn't be like crazy surprised if C9 made grand finals. I think it's hard. I think it's hard. They're going to have to pull out some... They're going to have to pull some stuff out of their ass and make some magic happen. But, like, I don't think it's, like, an insane thing to be like, yeah, C9 could beat Gen G and then beat RNG or EDG. Now, if you swap them, like, theoretically with Mad Lions, like, put them in Mad Lions slot, I'm like... <laughs> Rest in peace, Cloud9. Like, you aren't getting okay, through comes, ready? any, like, damn one or T1. T1's making it to Grands. Cloud9's making You're it to gonna Grands. You would take T1 over damn one? It's going to be the upset of the year. Ooh. Faker's insane. T1 versus Cloud9 Grands. <laughs> Faker versus Cloud9 Grands. Faker Dude, versus that's Parks. the content. That we're, breaking, be... we're breaking Twitch records. We're breaking YouTube records. We're, we're breaking jersey sales records. We're breaking... Probably some federal laws in there somewhere. <laughs> I don't know, but we're, we're breaking it all, okay? And it's coming true. Cloud9 T1, Grands of World. I'm calling it now. Clip me. Don't post it. Here we go. We're going to wrap the world's discussion there, but <laughs> it was a blast. I'm looking forward to the bracket stage. It starts on Friday. Uh, I'm, What's I'm first? Did, did they say? I didn't they look. did announce it. I think it is T1 Hanwa. Okay. First. So is it just, Friday. is it just it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, one each day, and I think it goes really? opposite. Oh, so I think five, course, if I remember yeah. the order, I think it is T1 Han one Friday, RNG EDG Saturday, then Damn One Mad Lions Sunday, and then we. I know for a fact 
uh, Gen G C9 is on Monday because I saw that and I was like, great. So I'm going to go straight from watching C9 to recording the podcast. So we're they, either they did be... it on Monday specifically so that North America didn't have to work. Yes. And specifically so that Luke and I can either be in here crazy hyped about a C9 win or crazy depressed because they let us down. You better against Gen wake G. your ass up. <sighs> If you come in and I'm all I'm in game three and you're in game one, all there's right. gonna be some real issues. I will get up. You gotta wake your ass up. <laughs> I'll get, I'll Drive get into up. the office Fine. between games three and four. <laughs> we'll just be sitting like it, it's like ten o'clock. People are rolling into the office and we're just on the couches by the front door, just like coffee, donuts in hand, half asleep. Just like come on, C9, let's go. <laughs> I'm on the phone. Nineteen people taking side. Yeah, bets Luke. On Luke's and Luke's taking meetings at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, that too. It's like every time I try to report record the podcast, he's getting phone calls. Me. <laughs> All right. That's the world's discussion for now. Let's talk uh, Sora oh in my God, Smash there's more? today. Sora is in Smash today. Sora is in Smash. This is a pretty quick discussion, but I'm certainly excited about it. Mm. Uh, I know a lot of people are stoked about it. I'm curious to see, you kind of highlighted it earlier when you were talking about Spargo and maybe him switching characters. Do We'll, we'll obviously have to see how strong is Sora, uh, Sora is on release, but like... Everywhere. Everyone. Jumping into competitive, you think he's going to just flood mm-hmm, the competitive yeah. scene? I'll see him in tournaments this weekend, if they let him. If whoever, whatever tournament. I mean, I feel like we'll see him in tournaments this weekend just because people are going to be, be excited banned. to play he's him. He's probably going to be banned. But I'm like, do you, I, I'm curious to see, and obviously this is totally just speculation now but i'm curious to see if he has like staying power mm. in competitive like characters like joker mm. have had he's a sword character so he's got that going on yeah um and most of the dlc characters have all been competitively viable for the most part mm-hmm. so i imagine he will be good enough to mm-hmm. compete at that scale uh as a sword character of course uh you have a lot of competition mm-hmm. uh, of being the best sword character so i think there's a certain level of um like he's got to have some Schnaz in order to kind of remain on top. I've been looking to his kit too much. I like yeah. going into it fresh, so I'll let you guys know in a couple hours. Yeah. Um, but uh, he'll probably usually it's like a two at least a two week process before they allow new characters into tournaments. So he probably he probably will be banned from whatever major is going on this weekend. But um, I am super excited to see him play. I know there's enough Kingdom Hearts fans to make it so he is a a all a stable in the meta regardless mm-hmm. of how good he is it's like pikachu almost right like someone has to play pikachu yep once esam eventually stops someone else will take up the mantle like it's just there has to be a pikachu player yeah there has to be a mario player right? you know what i mean um and he's the same way I, i'm sure there will always be at least a sora main floating around somewhere um i just actually really hope he's good like he's such a cool character i hope he's um i hope he's super strong and i hope i can summon goofy so i don't think so you serious? As far as I can tell, if I and, can't summon and it probably has bro. to do with the hurdles of like Disney's gonna want more of the pie. Give them the whole pie. Nobody needs any pie over there. They all have enough pie. Give them all the pie. Let me summon Goofy and Donald. Maybe. That's what I was hoping. I was hoping at least that they would be part of his final smash. Have you played uh, the Kingdom Hearts games, like the original Kingdom Hearts? Mm-hmm. So my first thought for Sora's final smash was like it's got to be a Trinity. Right, yeah. the Trinities from the original game. You have Sora, Donald, and Goofy all jump, and then something explodes or whatever. And I was like, "That's got to be it." What they did do with the Final Smash, I think, still pretty cool. But I'm with you. I'm like, I kind of wish we had a little Donald and Goofy in there because it's just. We'll see. Maybe we'll get added as trophies or spirits or. I know there's a bunch of spirits or... for like the original characters. Yeah. There's like a Riku and Kyrie and all that oh, stuff really in there cool. for sure, but. Yeah, again, I haven't looked into it too much, but I am overall excited, and I'm sure that Vicky Kitty will main him, at the very least. Like, I've never cared about picking what music is playing when I play Smash. I care now. Yeah. I'm going to be picking all the Kingdom Hearts tracks now. I'm going to get, uh, Connie's bringing in a copy of Melody of Memory, so I can have that safe file, so I can get the swing version of Dearly Beloved. Uh. <clears throat> We're going to be playing some Smash, baby, so mm-hmm. excited for that. Uh, last couple things to talk about here. First one, Steam banning cryptocurrencies and nfts and blockchain games that use them on the platform so valve says nope uh i can they have not come out with an official statement on why i think it's pretty easy to imagine why it feels very similar to the apple and fortnite situation steam's looking at it and going you guys can have money. <laughs> yeah, I see you making money over there with those cryptos and NFTs. 
uh, within these games on our platform, why, why am I not getting any of that? So uh, I would imagine that's the main reason why. What are your kind of thoughts on this? We keep, I feel like every other episode, we've got, we got some a crypto NFT story thing, on yeah. here. <laughs> well, it's just getting more and more popular. Uh, I would, of course, I think the reason why is, is kind of without that, it makes it kind of hard to come to any type of conclusion. I imagine mm-hmm. that it either could be something where it's like a legality reason if people are getting scammed people sure. are getting really upset and having bad user experiences with steam because yeah. they're you know thinking they're going to make money or going to be able to farm whatever it is it also could be something to do with the internal integration of um like wallets and other payment type systems that exist in the cryptocurrency and digital space trying yeah. to integrate them into the games and it kind of being a uh, difficult whether it be like a firewall or again a safety thing or a, a, a data breach user information like there's so many there's so many things sure. <laughs> that when it comes to like the digital currency space that could be the reason why um, I if it's not something along those lines and it's just like a you can't digital currency in my yard type situation without giving me a cut yeah and I would be pretty disappointed because I do think that the way that obviously the world is continuing to grow it's important that their you know steam would be able to adapt into that space as well and not fall behind because yeah. you know I even think I mean Steam's pretty like vintagey, you know. Steam hasn't done like I'm sorry, you downloaded a game on Steam recently. Like, nah, it looks the same. It looked when I was in 2002. So I'm I'm just saying like you know it comes a point where like you have to be able to adapt and grow into the new space. And I think mm-hmm. that you know when it comes to digital currency, everyone kind of needs to be thinking about it. So uh, that's my two. Those are my two opinions on depending on why they said no. Yeah. So whichever one whichever one turns up being true. You can use that clip. I mean, it's definitely something. <laughs> if if we ever do get a statement uh, from Valve uh, on this, we'll we'll talk about it because it's really only conjecture at this point. But I think I agree with you. I would be disappointed. You know, am I going to be playing any of those games? Probably not. Yeah. But I think that you because know, because I don't think any game developer would be like, oh, no, you can't have any of our money, like, because yeah. we're doing. You know, I'm sure they. I, I, I doubt it's as much of a financial thing as it is either a safety concern or a sure. off my yard concern. Yeah. We'll have to see. Last thing I want to talk about, um, and my initial question on this is really like, do you care? Um, but oh. it's Riot announcing this last week that they are going to be disabling all chat in League of Legends. Uh, they said in a post, uh, while all chat can be the source of fun social interaction between teams, as well as some good hearted banter, right now negative interactions outweigh the positives. We'll evaluate the impact of this change through verbal abuse reports and penalty rates, as well as surveys and direct feedback from you all. So they have left the door open that it could possibly return, but at the very least right now, Riot has made the decision that they don't think that all chat has a, you know, more positive impact on the game than the negative. What do you think? And well, do you care is, is really kind of my, my main question. I'd say my answer is yes, I do care. And I'm going to give okay. you an example of why I care. Yeah. Because one, I love I love goofing and gaffing and, sure. and joking around with people on the internet. Um, especially when you're playing games with people who you don't know. You yeah. know, it's, it's fun to be able to talk about it, especially with the other team, right? Mm-hmm. Your team, you got to be able to communicate for, like, communication purposes. But, like, I'll give you a Valorant example that happened to me, like, literally, like, two, three days ago. I'm playing Reyna. We're on Haven. It's on sea. I'm up in, I'm up in heaven. Um, and the last guy is directly underneath heaven, right? He's in hell or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I dr- and I, I drop off like facing that way, right? Mm-hmm. Facing where he's gonna be. And mid air, I shoot one bullet, and the bullet hits the dude right in the head. He got insta dies. Yeah. And I, I, and, I, and I land, right? And I land. And I, <laughs> we win the round, or whatever it is. It was yeah. like a, you know, clutch the round, nailed it. What's up? And um, and like I'm like, oh, oh, you know, like so I type in chat, just dots, right? Just dots. And like the whole enemy team goes, hmm, sus, sus, you know what I mean? Because it's like I, you know, because I basically typed it because I was like, oh god. And then they all like, wait, mm, they're all like putting like thinking faces and stuff. And uh-huh. I'm like, wait, wait, no, you know, because it's like he's cheating. Get him out of here, ban yeah. him, report him. Obviously, I, I, if you guys saw my stats, there's no, no chance I'm cheating, so it's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, you know, it's. It's those type of literally while you tell me the story, I was just thinking about how much fun that was and how funny it was to mm-hmm. be able to again just have one of those experiences. That everyone's thinking the same thing. We all have like a moment to laugh about it. Yeah. And I know, of course, as they say in the statement, the negatives outweigh the positives, which I completely agree because I've had similar opposite interactions in the same you know same setting. Um, I like all chat. I think it's super fun. I understand that. I think there's plenty of things you can turn off all chat. There's parent controls. There's people getting banned who lose access to chat because mm-hmm. of you know them getting reported. 
I mean, I think they do. I think they do a pretty good job in that sense. I know Riot even has uh, goes a step further a lot of times with their bans or suspensions and and focus it on people's specific IPs and things like that as well, right? Yeah. And I think that there will always be trolls and scumbags and people who can VPN and get around X or whatever it is. And you know, there's going to be exceptions to the rule. I think Riot does a good job of maintaining it the best that they can. Yeah. And I would not like to see it removed. As the games that don't have it, I significantly enjoy less. I would say that, personally, I, I don't really care either way. I mean, look, uh, honestly, the funny thing was, like, I read this, and the next day went and played a game of League, and I, I'm, like, walking to bot lane where we're red side, and I walk into river uh, below blue buff, and the enemy vein, like, walks into river and just stops. Emotes. And I just type dance, question mark, in all chat, and we just start dancing, and then, like, the enemy pike like walks up and tries to hook me and I like dodge it. I'm just like reporting. And the <laughs> yeah. vein is all like the vein's all like, I'm so sorry he wouldn't <laughs> listen to me. So like of course like right after that I have one of those fun interactions. And like yeah. I'm also a big fan if you've ever played League or Valorant with me. Um, every single game that I play, win or lose, no matter how good or how terrible I play, I also always drop GG Easy in all chat every single game. It's Gotta just like it. a running personal meme that makes me laugh every time. So like, I'm going to be a little bummed about that. I, I think in the grand scheme of things, it, it probably won't change my play experience all that much. But at the same time, you know, if there's really that big of a, a, a section of the community that's like, no, we love this. We love the ability to have these kinds of interactions and stuff. I'm like, yeah, all for it. Keep it around. You know a MOBA that died? What? I mean, Here's well, the storm. more. I was going to say. You know that. a MOBA say, that huh? doesn't have all chat? Did it ever have all chat? And did it die because it didn't have all chat? Just saying. Stats add up. Luke's right again. <laughs> Luke, the king of correlation, does in fact equal causation. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> one plus one still equals cancel game. So next up, interesting. Well, I'm I'm curious to see what happens. Uh, I don't know. I guess I hope reports go down because all chat's gone, but they also bring it back. I guess I'm reporting every teammate and every enemy I have for the rest of my life if they don't bring it back. Cool. I will mess the stats up myself. There you go. <laughs> Luke's got you covered if you're a fan of all chat. Uh. That's going to do it for this episode. Luke, what have you been playing this last week? I've had a pretty busy week. I honestly yep. haven't been able to dive in as much as I wanted to to a lot of things, but um, I am excited to play some Smash today with Sora. Uh, I've been kind of dabbling a little bit in Nickelodeon, but not playing it too much, honestly. Mm -hmm. I've been mostly putting my free time into uh, the new Hearthstone uh, single-player mode, mm -hmm. um, which is called Mercenaries, which is pretty nice. Uh, it's just a free game mode. Anyone can you know feel free to download Hearthstone and give it a shot if you want to, if you're a Hearthstone guy, but uh, it's all right. I mean... I'm kind of bored, I guess. It's not, it, it's like, it's very, very dynamic. There's a ton of different things, right? Like, you collect all these different characters, you open packs, you get new characters, they have different portraits, you upgrade their different abilities, and they start unlocking passives, and you go through, there's like tons of content to play through, and you can also like technically, like PvP, like other people if you want to, like with yeah. those new characters. So it's a whole thing, right? I just don't know if it's that fun. Yeah. I can't really tell. I'm still just kind of cruising through it, just like feel like I'm still in like the beginning parts of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm trying to get to the point where I feel like, I have all the characters, I can build all these different comps and start getting really creative with my different um, combos and stuff. So I'm trying to get to that point to make sure that I'm not just like writing it off too soon. Yeah. But it's been meh, but if you're a big Hearthstone fan, I'd say check it out and let me know what you think. Um, and other than that, all of my time has been put into New World. I am now nice. level 36. Okay. So I think last week I was like level 32. So, you know, a couple, I'm just trying. I'm just Last time I checked, Eddie was 57. Eddie's been 60 for like two weeks. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying I'm just trying to get there. You know, I, I'd say I'm on par with the majority of the working class of America. <laughs> uh, I, I do. I do think that most of us. That's who, a good way to put most it. Most of us who have full-time jobs that aren't, that are, that are difficult to. So the, sh the people that Shroud were ta was talking about, maybe? Maybe, yes, those people. Okay. So I would say the majority of the casuals in the mm -hmm. world who don't have time to put five hours a day into the yep. game are, are in their 30s working towards 40 right now, and okay. that's kind of that, ne that next clip in the game. So keep it up, workers. We're doing great. We believe in uh, We you. believe don't in us. I'm with you. Hit me up on Twitter, at Shimon He. I will <laughs> vote for you if you are syndicate. <laughs> if you're not syndicate, don't fucking talk to me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, but no, like, it's, don't, yeah, don't but talk to him if you're not syndicate. Uh, but yeah, New World, again, that game's been really, uh, a really good time to kind of awesome. continue to, to play through. And, I, and again, I totally disagree with Shroud. I think you can play it with any amount of time. Okay. Um, I think the game is very easy to 
Like I, it, with WoW. Does it feel like the barrier to entry is lower than WoW? Yes, with okay. WoW, dude. Like if you don't play for a day in yeah. WoW, you come back and you're like. Oh my God, like everyone's, <laughs> that guy's got a higher item level than me now, and that guy can do something I can't do, and like yeah. that dude got the super secret cooking recipe, and a new, I mean, that might be going on in late game New World, I wouldn't know, but in when you're leveling through New World, it just kind of, like, every time I log on, I just like start playing the game again, I just yeah. pick right back into what I was doing, and it doesn't necessarily seem like I'm, I'm missing a lot, yeah. which I feel like is a really important component of MMOs, is that they they can't literally be 24-7. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, components of it can be, and obviously you should be able to get benefits for playing the game 24-7, but, like, you know, I don't want to miss out on the head, head, headless horseman stuff because I couldn't play for two hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what it feels like when I play WoW. So I've been enjoying that piece. I'm going to keep grinding. I'll keep you guys updated on how my path goes and if I can make it to final level or if I will surrender myself um, to... Uh, I don't know, the give up gods or whatever you want to call it. But overall, that is what I have been playing. How about okay. you? Uh, more Pokemon Sword, cool. which I'm having fun with. Uh, I just have to, I've beat seven gyms so far. Just, nice. So That's I just got to go beat Raihan now. Um, Duraludon, man, you got to watch out for that thing. Bring a fire. I got a Colossal. That'll do it. So I definitely, I think I got to level Dude, up I, a little more. I He's at like 45. with my Colossal in, in Sword. Colossal is beast. Annihilate people. <laughs> Colossal is is definitely disgusting. Uh, I also discovered uh, this last week my favorite Pokemon of Gen Eight, and it's Tox Toxtricity. Oh, okay. Uh, I actually think that Pokemon design so cool, Poison Electric type, super sick, and I'm especially psyched because we did that trade session last night, and I got a Rainbow Rare Toxtricity from Kyle, so I'm so happy. I didn't know. I got so, I got some Toxtricity cards. I'll bring for you. Yeah. Um, I love Toxicity. I did forget I, Metroid Dread, though. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You yeah. played it on stream last week, and yeah. thankfully you were like, hey, don't watch it. Spoilers. Yeah. Because I know you know I want to play it, so I appreciate that. But spoiler free. Spoiler free. I'm about a fifth through the game. Mm -hmm. I think the game is, uh, it was really hard. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Kind of too scary for me. I'm I'm not great. I'm not great <laughs> like at scary stre games. Like stressful, no. scary, like, or like I was being chased by things. Yeah, a so. lot of being chased by things, <laughs> and I died a lot. I lost a lot. Okay, it was very difficult. I'm not good at games like that when I play by myself. Yeah, I've always played the games with like another person next to me. Yeah, because I always get lost and I get frustrated and I just like never find where I, even if it's like right in front of me. We'll spring kills. So, and put no, it next I, dude, to I had Naughty Moroku in chat who was saving my ass. <laughs> Literally, he was like he was like giving me hints. Yeah, he was like believe in the birds i'd be like the birds and then i'd like <laughs> i'd like find the, the route or whatever but i had a blast playing and i'm excited to keep playing it um and yeah that's a single player game i'm playing right now so i'm also super hyped for uh one game i'm looking forward to is the remakes of diamond and pearl oh yeah because i actually never played gen 4 i was gen 1 2 3 Fell off of Pokemon. That's toxic. Then came actually. back with uh, I played uh, I got X like a mm. couple years ago, so I played X. I got Ultra Sun, and then now I'm playing Sword. So now I'm going back. So now I now will finally get to play some of the best Gen story. Four. One of the best story games in my opinion. Really? I think that like um, five, six. We're on eight now, right? Yes. So five, six, and seven were like. In my opinion, terrible. I feel like they just totally took the story and they were like, whoops, we can forgot we where talk we are. About like, well, I, we don't know what we're doing. And they just threw themselves into the wall. So my but thoughts, X and Y, four. X and Y, baby mode. That's like Pokemon baby mode. Way too easy. I'm like, bro, you're giving me, okay, I got a starter. Okay, here's a Mega Lucario. Okay, sick. Okay, here's a, a Kanto starter that can Mega yeah. Evolve too. And I'm like, bro. And like, all of a sudden I'm like, bro, you gave me my entire team. I don't have to go catch any Pokemon. Like, you gave me everything I need. Uh... Gen 7, Sun and Moon, bro, let me play the game. Like, I get it. Pokemon's trying to go like, hey, like, we can do cutscenes now and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, bro, leave me alone. Like, I want to go hunt some wild Pokemon. And kind of, that's kind of my complaint with Gen 8 right now where I'm just like, uh, what's his name? Hop, your, like, rival. I'm like, why do I feel like this game is literally just, hey, go chase Hop around Galar. And I'm just like, dude, like, can you just let me go explore and, like, figure some stuff out? Because it's literally every time it's like, okay, what's up? Yeah, so uh, I'm going to go to this gym. I'll meet you there. And then the map comes up. And it's like, you better go to that gym and go meet Hop. And I'm like, all right, I went to the gym. Now can I go do something? Okay, hey, I'm going to go to this cave over here. Better meet me there. Okay, go, go meet Hop in the cave. And I'm like, dude, 
Just let me play. Yeah, I think Diamond and Pearl is super good. I love the story. Platinum was such a cool game. Um, the like the story concept around Dialga and Palkia the whole time and mm -hmm. space stuff is like all so badass. Mm -hmm. And you get to go like in Platinum, you get to go to like the underground area with Giratina, who like rules the shadows. It's Bro, just, I've seen it's I've seen like video so of that badass because there's like a Pokemon YouTuber I've gotten really into lately, and I was watching his like he did a uh, playthrough of Platinum, and I was just seeing that part of like in the original Platinum, whatever that space is that you go to find, uh, what, it's Giratina, right? I was just like, bro, he's like walking upside down. Like, dude, what's going on? Dude, it's some dimensional, <laughs> it's some dimensional twist. Dude, I was like, what is that. this? But that's what I'm talking about. I'm really excited for that game as well. We will yeah. be doing a, similar to our Metroid Prime experience, we'll be doing a Pokemon experience. Oh, that, very cool. Walmart location. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Yeah, that's going to do it. Uh, 10 episodes in the books i'm gonna give luke a little fist bump here we made it to double digits uh well done follow uh my man over here on twitter he's at shimonahi i'm at yeso you guys uh, or at caster yeso i should say forgetting my own twitter handle that's a mess i was like oh you um, changed it yeah no i definitely didn't uh if you guys want to ask us questions tell us what you think of the podcast whatever you want to do reach out to us just ask luke for some you know advice on pokemon cards because that's what i do literally every day you're welcome hit us up on twitter uh enjoy the episode we're on youtube spotify apple podcasts and we're here every week at twitch.tv forward slash esports arena we got qualifiers for series e going on right now we guilty got table five every sunday Apex. guilty gear as well that's very important so check us out on socials and hit us up on esportsarena.com all the info that you need about what we're doing is over there so we appreciate your time have a great rest of your week and we'll see you next time mm -hmm.